वक्रतुंड महाकाय सूर्य कोटि समप्रभा निर्विघ्न कुरु मे देवा सर्वकार्येशु सर्वदा सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरदे कामरूपिनी विद्यारंभं करिष्यामि सिद्धिर्भवतु मे सदा गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देवो महेश्वरः गुरु देव परम ब्रह्मा तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः हरिओम एंड गुड इवनिंग फ्रॉम नायग्रो फॉल्स लास्ट वीक और चिन्मय मिशन लंदन स्टीयरिंग कमेटी एंड आई वी हैड एन ऑपरचुनिटी टू मीट द मेयर ऑफ लंदन बिकॉज द आश्रम दैट वी बॉट राइट नाउ इज जोन्ड residential and we need this to be essentially commercial or institutional and as we were discussing our property with the mayor right now it's at the um, outer boundary of the urban development line and they want this line to be very attractive because it's a gateway to the city i was appreciative of the mayor's insights into how even this road represents the city of london yesterday in pittsburgh our steering committee had a meeting with the adams township this is where we bought nine and a half acres of land and we're building our new center chinmay kailash and this was a big public meeting with lots of people from the city and people who live in the city and as we were discussing the development of our property they were asking lots of questions about where will the drainage be how far are you from the house um what will be the material of the parking lot and on and on and on and again i was very appreciative of these questions that i would never ask this meeting with london and in, and in pittsburgh is demonstrating shreyas the path of shreya is long term thinking these cities are not interested in the development of this property for 5 days or 5 years but they're thinking for 50 years that there'll be so much rain what if you want to sell the property and on and on and on and initially this is very hard the path of shrey or long term thinking is difficult like looking after one's health investing in a education plan but this initial difficulty makes all that comes afterwards easy soft smooth as i was growing up there's a lot of professions i wanted to get into being a firefighter being a gym teacher being a eye doctor being a dentist and then i settled with my ideal profession being a letter carrier that will be the focus of another satsang and another career that if i was not engaged in carrying letters would be urban development because i find with urban development a lot of vedanta needs to be addressed and acted upon and though we're not involved in urban development we are involved in self development and self development is understanding and following the path of shreya 
the pursuit of peace, long-term thinking, this is a course in the best investment. Did that introduction work for you? It's hard to think of these introductions, right? We're on class 19. What do I do every <laughs> Thursday evening? Our Shastras, Atma Bodha, are striving to bring the infinite to our attention. And our attention is always on the finite. There's a saying, without chamatkar, there's no namaskar. Unless someone performs magic, they manifest ash or they touch you and you faint, then nobody prostrates or respects such people. And the infinite, there's no chamatkar. There's no magic to the infinite. But our Shastras are trying to make the infinite identifiable by using indicators, by using examples. Remember, our scriptures are not trying to create the infinite because you cannot create the infinite. Not possible. And specifically in Sanatana Dharma, when was Sanatana Dharma founded? There is no time. Who founded Sanatana Dharma? Some may think Acharya Shankara or Veda Vyasa, but that's not true. Acharya Shankara is the champion of Advaita Vedanta, um, and Veda Vyasa may be the visionary of Advaita Vedanta, but they're not the founders. One cannot create the infinite, which means the infinite always is. The infinite is being. And that's what our Shastras are trying to make us pay attention to, identify with. In Shloka 36, Acharya Shankara had shared, Eka, this oneness, is Nitya. This oneness is because this oneness is Shuddha. Shuddha means there is no other to make this entity impure. There is no other entity to make this entity impure. When you burn wood that's not tainted, it burns in a very crisp way. But when you burn wood that has metal in it or paint or pesticides, it, there's, it's a, not a crisp burn. There's a lot of crackling. It's erratic because it's impure. This eka is nitya. This oneness is because vimukta. Vimukta means there is no other to depend on. Vimukta means most independent. There is no other to depend on. Hence, this oneness is. This lack of another in the form of impurity or dependence is referring to us. You are pure. We are not sons and daughters of sin. You are independent. It is the equipments that are dependent. The sutra for Shloka 36 was, is, identify the identity crisis. When I have an identity crisis, I think I'm impure. I think I'm dependent. But if you identify the identity crisis, Whoever is experiencing this crisis, that is the ego, they're going through the impurity and dependence, not me. In Shloka 37, Acharya Shankara brings up the idea of a Brahma Vasana, to create a new Vasana. And by creating a new Vasana, we let go of a old Vasana. Put simply, the more we give to Atma, the more we give up Anatma. The more we give to the deepest aspect of us, the more we give up the shallower aspects of us. The more I give to the intellect, which really means the more I give to Bhagavan Krishna, the more I give up control to Prince Arjuna who is the fickle mind, 
that is confused, afraid, sad. To have this new vasa, vasana called the Atma Vasana. And the sutra here is, the one is only. Not the one and only, the one is only. All we do should be to develop this Atma Vasana. I am more than what I am feeling I am. And finally, in Shloka 38, Acharya Shankara says, contemplate on this, bhavayet, feel this, and you should feel this by being in a vivikta desha. You should learn to enjoy your company. You should learn to be alone. I find that when people engage in contemplation or any sadhana, when do they engage in that contemplation or sadhana? right before they have to go to work, or school, or run errands. So as they're sitting down for contemplation, what are they contemplating on? <laughs> they're worried about being late for work. They're worried about someone taking their seat in class. They're worried about the line at the grocery store. So there's no contemplation. If you're going to practice contemplation and you have to leave at 8 a.m., you should be practicing contemplation at 7 a.m. That's what it means to feel free, that there's no worry in one's personality. In deeper contemplation, you should feel like you're Parama Hamsa. Parama Hamsa means you have no identification with any relationship, any space, any equipment. Free. Then one can fundamentally contemplate. But as long as I think I'm a boy, as long as I think that I employ these people, as long as I think I'm the mind, contemplation is not possible. So Vivekta Desha is not just outside, this is inside also. And the sutra here is living purely lights up priority. Living purely lights up priority. When you go to a physician and they have to scan something inside of you, they ask you to fast, right? And they may inject some dye and then that's lit up where there may be an illness. But if you eat and there's other stuff in your system, then they can't see that as clearly. So live purely. And our purpose in life becomes um, clearer then. Good, we continue. We are on shloka 39. A whole lot of these shlokas are similar to each other. This is a difficult text to teach. It is also a difficult text to study. If there's one transformation in our personalities, it should be patience. Be patient with these shlokas so that they become closer to you. Atman yeva kilam drishyam. Atman yeva kilam drishyam. Pravilapya dhiya sudhihi. Pravilapya dhiya sudhihi. Bhava yed ekam atmanam. Bhava yed ekam atmanam. Nirmala kasha vatsada. Nirmala kasha vatsada Atman yeva kilam drishyam Pravilapya dhiya sudhihi Bhava yed ekam atmanam Nirmala kasha vatsada Acharya Shankara says in the first line Atmani eva In the self in the infinite, akilam, all drishyam, articles, beings, and circumstances exist. In peace, all pleasure, possession, and position finds a place. In the Atman, all else is. 
all else is submerged. That will come up later. Drisham means that which can be experienced. In other words, all that we've experienced in our life. And all of our experiences are dependent on existence, dependent on awareness. If existence is not there, we can't have experiences, correct? If, you, if you're not alive, can you have a birthday? If you're not alive, can you graduate? If you don't exist, can you have any experience? And suppose you exist, but you're not aware. Then how do you know you're having experiences? Ajaya Shankar is saying here, all that we've experienced depends on that which is independent. And the practical meaning of this the gauge of independence or the, the association with independence is a greater reality and a greater importance. That which is independent is more real, isn't it? That which is more independent is more important then, rather than that which is dependent. And this thought continues. In the second quarter, Acharya Shankara says, Sudhihi. Someone whose dihi, their intellect is su, is refined, is reflective, diha, they think, they're analyzing pravilapya, that all of that which is a name, a form, all of that which is a article, a being, a circumstance, all of this is to be submerged, all of this is to be immersed in the Atman, which again is trying to teach us articles being circumstances are not as real as the self. They're not as important as peace. In this first line, we come to become more clear with the purpose of our breathing, the purpose of our thinking, this submerging of that which is drishan, that which is an experience, is not physical. It is based on vision. And I'll give you an example of this. When you join a new corporation, when you join a new course in your colleges and universities, and you're sitting across from someone, they are an acquaintance, correct? You're seeing them for the first time. Then you listen to them more, you share ideas on projects, and slowly that acquaintance becomes a friend. Yes, everyone's gone through this. Now who determined that friendship? Your eyes. They were an acquaintance, and then they became a friend. It has nothing to do with physicality. You submerge that separation to become a friend to that person, for that person to become a friend to you. Don't think that when you become enlightened that you don't recognize a fridge or food that tastes good or food that tastes bad, food that's rotten or food that's not rotten. You know all of that. You also know this is existence awareness. This is life also. Okay? Please try to remember that example I gave of an acquaintance becoming a friend. There's no change in physicality, it's a change in mentality. Your change in mentality. Bhava yed ekam atmanam. This is a copy of the previous shloka. This was also in the third quarter, the third pata. Bhava yed means to feel. Feel this, this oneness. Now I'm going to present this from a different way because. Though it's the same sentence, the more we are able to extrapolate from this, the more real this becomes. Are you lusty towards yourself? Do you ever look in the mirror and say, wow, I am super attracted to you? <laughs> are you ever jealous of yourself? Like, how did you get the promotion and I didn't? <laughs> and you're referring to yourself. <laughs> Vices can only exist where there's 
two-ness or separation. In oneness, there cannot be vices. When you get mad at yourself, because you're thinking that, but I get mad at myself, I let myself down because there's two people there. There's the higher self and the lower self. But in pure oneness, there cannot be any desire, anger, greed. What would you be greedy about? There's only oneness. So what this means to feel the oneness that is the self is virtue development. If you want this third quarter to come to life, develop virtues like patience, acceptance, compassion, discipline. Then we will feel that oneness. In the fourth quarter, Nirmala Akashavat Sada, our nature is like space. And space, sada means doesn't change. Nirmala, there is no impurity or dirt in space. This fourth quarter is extrapolated from chapter two of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Prince Arjuna is afraid of dying and he's afraid of causing death also. And Bhagavan Krishna shares to him in a most scientific way Earth, he uses the word weapon there. Weapons are made up of earth. Earth cannot harm water. Water cannot harm fire. Fire cannot harm air. And you're all thinking, but water can harm fire. You have to think in a macro level. Obviously, in a micro level, this can. But in a macro level, cannot. And all four of these elements, Earth, water, fire, air can do nothing to space. When intense volcanic, volcanic, volcano eruptions, whatever, happen in Iceland and the sky has all of this soot and this ash in the air, planes can't go through there, but space, nothing happens to space. Correct? The monsoons in Mumbai, the year that I joined the Vedanta course, the monsoons were so intense, many of you have been to Sandipani, the Powai Lake overflowed onto Saki, uh, Sakinaka Road. There was fish on that road. But the space are, is not affected by those monsoons. So these four grosser elements cannot touch the fifth <coughs> subtler element. And then there's you. You give existence to space. You give awareness to space. Can space touch you? So to even think that you are an angry person, you are an ignorant person, that's not accurate. That's when we don't have the bodha of atma. But when we have knowledge of the atma, angers of the mind, ignorances of the ego, I am. Existence awareness. Here is your sutra. Relativity implies the absolute. In this shloka, there's a focus on that which is relative. Drishyam, experiences. Pravilapya, they should be submerged. Relativity implies the absolute. If there's a relative, there's an absolute, correct? If there's an absolute, does there have to be a relative? There doesn't have to be. Is that a good sutra? Okay, I'll ask again for my own confidence. <laughs> Was that a good sutra? <laughs> Shloka 40. Rupa Varnadikam Sarvam Rupa it's such a pressure for all of you to keep up with just changing the page of the chant, isn't it? Vihaya <laughs> paramarthavit Vihaya paramarthavit Paripurna chidananda Paripurna chidananda Svarupena vatishtate <laughs> Rupa Varnadikam Sarvam Vihaya Paramartha Vit Paripurna Chidananda 
I'm okay with chanting, but it's you who make me confused. And then, then I feel like I'm not very strong in chanting. It's your fault, not my fault. Rupa means forms. Varna means don't say caste. Varna means color. Adika means etc. So forms and colors, names and qualities, all of that is etc. Sarvam, all of them. Okay. These lines are to be studied as a line, but we're dividing them into quarters, so there's more focus. So this comes to life more. Acharya Shankara is obviously implying here that all of these separations, these differences, are not to be given importance. That will come. One of the most challenging aspects of the work that I do, uh, on LinkedIn, I've been receiving a lot of messages for my 10 year anniversary of being uh, a teacher with Chinmaya Mission. And it's those LinkedIn messages that are those standard messages, you know, like, congrats on your anniversary you know it, it, there's no <laughs> there's no real emphasis to it it's like hey bro good work you know stuff like that <laughs> and you just press send on it <laughs> so the challenging aspect in the last 10 years is when people work with me there's a focus on my rupa and my varna my rupa tends to be different than a typical icon of self-development or sanatana dharma. No, I wear white. I don't have that much white hair. When I'm about to speak, people are waiting for that Indian accent, but then a Canadian accent <laughs> comes out, isn't it? And Varna also. I prefer soccer over cricket. I like eating at Taco Bell. Etc. 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 And I find that we're so stuck on the rupa and varna that when someone comes to try to work who doesn't have the same rupa and varna, you stop believing in them. It's hard to um, accept such a person, and it doesn't bother me. I'm only trying to bring to your attention that in in the walks of life. How even if you're trying to focus on your self-development and to encourage others in the same, we're stuck on Rupa and Varna, isn't it? Vihaya, let go, discard, give up in Paramartha Vit by understanding, by following, by being the highest. When you're looking from 50,000 feet in the air, you don't see anyone's form. You don't see anyone's color. All are one. I'm going to open up this term some. Sam. Sata. Sata means plane of existence or reality. In Advaita Vedanta, there's three planes of existence. There's three realities. Try to remember this. This is the technical aspect of Advaita Vedanta. The first is called Pratibhasika Satta. Pratibhasika Satta, which means illusory existence, illusory reality. And the way that Swami Shivananda tries to explain this, Swami Shivananda's, Swami Chinmayananda's Diksha Guru. He helped him begin on this path. He said that Prati Bhasika Sata is like the dream state. A dream is totally illusory. You can't be enlightened in a dream. It's just happening. And he makes this comparable in another way. He says it's like foam that comes up when waves crash into each other. So it's like foam. Okay, it's like a dream, it's like foam. Just hold that as you get into the other levels. Next is Vyavaharika Satta. Vyavaharika, which means a transactional 
reality. An exchange plane of existence, that is what we're doing right now, the waking state. We eat, we talk, we study. You can get enlightened in the waking state. Will we get enlightened? We pray, but we can get enlightened. And this is like the wave. So you have the foam, you have the wave. The foam depends on the wave, correct? And then the reality that's being discussed here, Paramartika Sata. Paramartika Sata is the absolute reality. The most independent plane of existence, this is the ocean. The foam depends on the wave, the wave depends on the ocean. This is not the dream or waking state, but the sleep state. Because in sleep, there is an apparent oneness. So Acharya Shankara is saying, these names and forms should all be immersed in oneness. Paripurna Chidananda. Ananda is joy, chit awareness, purna completeness, and an important prefix here is buddy. Completely complete. Completely aware. Completely joyous. Buddy. Our Bhagavad Gita students, we have used this word a lot recently. Buddy upasana, buddy prashna. We will feel this completeness by going through that which is deeper than names and forms. And this completeness is because there's no change. Completeness because there's no change. And making this more relative, you've heard me say this many times, where there's change, there is challenges. That worries us, isn't it? You finish one exam, you're already worried about the next exam. You um, had a good semester teaching Balavar, you're already concerned about the next year. Will you get the same class or these students are coming into the class now, right? I should shift to a different center. <laughs> Where there's change, there are challenges. But if there's no change, there is no challenge. So how are you then? At ease. This is the word swasti. Su asti. Well being. You are, and I don't want to say relaxed because you can just go to sleep and be relaxed. You can have a drink and be relaxed. This is just a natural sense of being at ease. Do you remember the last time you felt completely at ease? We don't even remember when we were at ease. When we're at ease, we get worried that we are at ease. <laughs> and Acharya Shankara finishes this shloka. Swarupa. Don't be another form that is a male, facial hair, skin color, mind type. Swarupa. Your form is swa, which is that closest, most natural. This is Avatishtati. Avatishtati means being. It is not a avastha. Avastha means that which comes and goes. Avastha means an experience. We're all trying to have a spiritual experience, isn't it? I'm going to hear the sound of Bhagavan Vishnu's conch. And then I'm going to float into the air. Right? Or I'm going to see these colors. When I close my eyes, I see all of the chakras moving. It, this is not an experience. <laughs> it's not a avasta. Avatishtati means easiness. Avatishtati, avatishtati is being. Making this more relative. Once you have the taste of independent joy, can you go back to dependent joy? Once you've tasted going on a yatra to Bharat, can you ever go back to Bharat as a tourist? Can you? Once you've started waking up early on Sunday mornings to help with our Sunday classes, can you go back to being lazy and just sleeping in and eating nachos and, 
etc., etc. <laughs> you can't do any of that because you're getting a taste of of what you are, your 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 nature, and you want to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And the deeper you go, there's less becoming and there's more being. There's less noise, more silence. Once you've learned to enjoy your company, your own company, you never get lost in FOMO. In my own personal experiences, studying in an ashram for two years, serving for 10 years, a vice that I was depleted by back in the day that is not depleting me as much anymore is jealousy. Because I value what I, I do what I value and I value what I do. And this is exactly what chapter 12 of Bhagavad Gita teaches us. Lord Krishna telling Prince Arjuna, you should know what you love and then love what you know. Jealousy is purged then less trying to become other people, and you start to be who you are. That is liberation, isn't it? To not have to look in a certain way, act in a certain way. I didn't get invited to this. I have to be invited to that. Freedom. Possible. Once you taste that, you want all freedom. Paripurna. Swarupa. The sutra for shloka 40, attach to the detached. Attach to the detached. The more I attach to the joy I just talked about, to the independence I talked about, to myself, uh, the more I detach from that which is not me. And my nature is already detached. Isn't it? So if I'm attaching to that which is detached, that is leading me to this independence. Maybe I confused that. I'm going to share that one more time, okay? Um, Vyasa goes through a whole lot of clothes because he's growing fast. So we don't invest a lot in his kids' clothing, his infant clothing. We do not invest a lot in that because he's going to grow out of it. In, in weeks sometimes. But as he gets older, I'm told that your eyes stop changing around 18, your mouth, the teeth stop moving when you're 20 or something like that. That's when you should get la laser eye surgery if you choose that. Or if you're going to do major work on your teeth, that's when you do that. You see, the investment is more when you know that's going to last longer. Correct? So if you attach or invest in that which is long-term, that which is independent, that which is, um, that which will give you greater returns, you naturally have to let go of that which is more surface, more shallow, less important. Attach to the detached. Oh. Nada.